Greetings everyone, it's Alexa again, with the first build in Cycle 2. And it's actually an old build, I just updated for the existing, or for the new Cycle Rider. Oh god, we gotta kill this guy real fast. He's gonna shred our ass. This is 200 Corruption, which is, as you know, now in the newest version, considered high Corruption. Because anything over 300 is probably gonna be somewhat tough for most builds. This is the Bart and Bob Necromancer. And even with all the nerfs that happened to Ward and all that, um, it's still a low-life build, still seems to be the best for the Necromancer. And it needs only one item, one new item. That's actually one of the new items, but it's actually very easy to get. I'll show you in a second. Just give you a little bit of more on what you do. You really, this is a really lazy man's build. What you do is mostly kite with your character. And he is your main damage dealer, he is your tank. That's Bud. I got rather, that's Bob and that's Bud. You have Dreadshade and you have Chaos Bolts. Both are buffs for the mage. You only put them on the mage. So sometimes they stand on each other, so it's tough to get the Dreadshade properly. So what you do is you go to the enemies. Your tank will charge ahead. And then you cast the Dreadshade and shoot the Chaos Bolts at your mage. And that makes it that he always crits and actually does a lot of damage, as you can tell. It's on the Chronic, by the way, also. It's a little bit AoE because he shoots five bolts. And you see this blue thing um, underneath him, these blue effects, right? That means he has the Chaos Bolt buff. And there is a black thingy above his head. This dude, this ghost, if you can see it. That thing says he has a Dreadshade buff. It also says it at the bottom left here. All right. And then you just kite. That's all you do. While they do the damage. You don't have to do anything else. This isn't even maxed, but it doesn't matter. So, again, this is 200 Corruption. I've killed three Harbingers already with this build. Quite easily. Actually, very easy. You really only have to kite the damage. I also killed an Orobis at level 150 Corruption, I believe. Just fine. Um, so, he can do it. I think he can... I don't know if he can kill the Pinnacle Boss. I will try that. If that build can do it, rather. But it's a very strong build. And let's look at the items. You do need a bunch of items, right? Now, this is a new item, right? That we got with this patch. The Scales of Lemniscade. Um, it has a drawback, but it's also a, a buff. Uh, it's also good in some other senses. So, what, it is, what is it? You see, you get 312% increased minion damage and 160% minion health. There are some rolls you see it yourself. You get health yourself. But you can only control one shade. That means the old build where you run Dread Shade and Infernal Shade and put it both on your mage doesn't work anymore. Because one of the shades is removed. Now Dread Shade has a 30% increased buff effect and 25% increased health decay. The health decay doesn't matter because this is removed completely through our skills anyway. The key thing is the Dread Shade has 30% increased buff effect. That means everything in the Dread Shade tree you apply onto your mage gains a 30% buff. Now, 30% isn't really that much. So, I will be honest, if you don't have this item, it doesn't actually matter. <laughs> um, because you can just use, that's what I did, you use a Spectre, a Spectre, a Scepter, that has minion damage, and you can get this up to 120%, and an offhand that has minion damage with 120 or 120, 150%, then you're almost exactly at the same minion damage. You don't get the health, but you get the damage. And you can have both shades. Because the key thing about the Infernal Shade is, if you look at it, where is it? No, oh, here. It's always this thing, right? This is the only node we ever wanted from the Infernal Shade with this old build. Attack and cast speed up to 72%. At the bottom it says max speed increase. So it was attacking way faster. We, don't, can't, we can't do this anymore because this item says you either have to go with the Dread Shade, that gives you the 30% buff, or you go with the Infernal Shade, that grants your minions damage immunity for 3 seconds with a 10 second cooldown, which is pretty pointless, you just recast your minions, who gives a fuck. Right? You have a 200% chance to apply Frailty and Slow to nearby enemies every second for Infernal Shade, so that is also good, but we're not gonna get this, because fuck Infernal Shade. So I use this only for Dread Shade, because it seems better. It's the old problem with two handles in this game. A two-hander needs to be so much better 
than a one-hander because you lose an extra item with four extra affixes or extra buffs. It all has to be in one item, which is a two-hander. So the two-handers are still just very mid. I wanted to test it. It is not bad because one key thing this has is in the implicit is the 21% mini necrotic penetration. So it does do more damage. But it's it's not really that crazy, you know? That's what I mean. You can also just run a scepter here with the minion damage and an offhand. It gives you also um, more necro res or more cold res or whatever. Whatever it is you want. Um, you can also run the bone claim of then on top instead of this. That gives you a ward per necrotic, dam uh, necrotic resistance. So you can buff this even up more so you have more health because now with the ward changes we're sitting at 4.3k. At level 97. So, this is not necessary. Okay, it's cool if you want to have it. It also looks cool. It's quite quite fancy if she wears it. But um, it's not necessary. What is necessary to even survive these days at all with an Acolyte is the Exanctionist. You need that. Low life. I, I tried this actually as a high life build, meaning just a regular body armor and regular boots. And just a little bit of war generation that way. I was sitting at 2.5k health or something like that. I just died to everything. Everything. And now at 4.5k health, it's finally good. As Again, I could move, move, move use. I could use Bone Claim or Barboot to gain up to like 5k ish health. But again, ward has been changed a lot. So you can't really get up to high ward levels anymore. 5k was sort of the max I got with this. Maybe 6k you could do. And that's about it. And because, as we know, the game generally just got way more difficult for everyone. Because all the strong builds got nerfed. So, yeah, but that's basically the idea. If you don't have this one, just go with mini damage on everything. You need the Exanctionist and the Last Steps of the Living for your health. To survive at all. With War Decay Threshold and all that, you know how it is. Everything else is mini damage, see? Mini damage, mini health. Mini damage... Mana region not necessary, but it's cool. Minion damage. Minion damage. Skeletal mage plus two to that. You should. I think you should have this to make him really to buff him really up. Not necessary though, but it is cool. Also has minion damage implicit in that affix and minion health. Pretty good. Uh, skeletal mage damage. This is why I went with this helmet because this is an affix. If you have it, great. Just gives him straight more damage. In war per second, great. And of course the death rattle. So the things you definitely need uniques are these three. Death rattle. But this drops very... It's a common one, so that's fine to get. Exanctionist, it's not as easy, but you should have it. If you're an Acolyte player, you need Exanctionist. It's just what it is. I never play any other body armor on Acolyte. Ever. And this hasn't changed with 1.1, apparently. If you have this slam with 30% increased health, that's even better. That means more ward. And uh, Lessons of the Living you get from the Frostblade for Moses. Uh, also, somewhat easy to get. The, the only tough one is Exanction is really this one. It's actually very easy to get. What you do, you set your loot filter. So it shows you um, two-handed weapons, two-handed axes. This one. You want to have the two-handed axe. It's, that it shows this a lot. Then you get all these two-handed axes and you just use a Rune of Ascendance. There's only three two-handed axes you can get. As far as I know, I only get, I only ever got the the usurper's mandate and the bone bone thingy, and this one. Yeah, I think that's the only three two-handed axes we have currently. So it's a one in three chance to get this item with a rune of ascendance. It's a good chance, the best you will ever have for the rune of ascendance. You can farm it from the um, reign of dragons timeline with these unique axe echoes rewards. Not from the boss, from the Echo Rewards. Um, but yeah, it's not really that crazy. I wanted to try it. I'm also going to try this with the Ravlot if it does anything there. In this build, it's not bad, but it's also not great. Okay, very simple. That's for the items. If you don't have it, throw everything into minion damage. Minion damage, minion health. That's it. If in doubt, throw into intelligence because they also scale with int. That's what you need. If you run the Chaos Bolts, you also need a little bit of mana. Because they do eat some mana, but you really only need to hit him every 10 seconds, right, with it. For example, now he has nothing underneath him. 
And now you see it, and actually see it better with the golden. It now has the thing glowing. That means he has the buff from the Chaos Bolts. Idols, idols are super simple with Acolyte as always, especially Necromancer. Health. Just health. Okay, it's health. It's health. It's health. 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 It's all health. Okay, very simple. Um. Now for the blessings, this is actually with the new new build. It's easy to actually change the blessings. What you always want to go for is for what I do with the blessings is the resistances. That's the best thing because they can go up to seventy five percent. Not this one because I didn't get this one with this um, character, I believe. But physical rest can go up to seventy five percent in an empowered one. Or all resistances, lightning void resistance. I always go for void, physical rest, necro. Or poison because these are on the same timeline but these three are always get with the blessings and then of course here you want to either have large alt drop rate because i need this or you want to have xp but at level 97 i don't really need xp anymore because i don't care about 100 but that's for the blessings now for the skills the obvious one is all mage right you want to have this at 22 at least and you don't need it but it's a, it's a great nice addition what you definitely need is of course the arc mage right this is, so you have one big mage who does more damage, has more health, and is bigger. And he shoots double D projectiles. Then you go here. This is just more attack speed, cast speed, um, extra projectiles. Spell damage, because he does spell. These are spells he casts. You only need to put two into crit chance, because he always crits. We do this with our dread, chain, dread shade. And of course crit multi, so he does more damage with the crits. That's what we want. Put one point into this. So he never dies. As long as he's attacking, he never dies because he leeches health. But one point is enough. And if you have um, points to spare, put them in this. More damage based on your maximum mana, which isn't much, but it's just more damage. All right? Very simple. Very easy. The golem is the same as always, really. I never change the golem. It's just, <laughs> it's just you always play him like this. Meaning you go into armor, make him bigger in threat. So enemies attack him first. Um, bigger, more armor, armor to other minions, and then down here, this is great. Uh, it restores health to you and itself. To you, it's not really that necessary because we are low life, it doesn't matter, but to himself. So he actually keeps himself alive a little bit better. Golden, very simple. Now let's look at the Dreadshade. Dreadshade is, as always, pretty much as well. I didn't change this at all. The key thing is down here on the left, over my face basically, minion always crits with egoism, right? But it has now a cooldown. So it has an 80 second cooldown. But it lasts longer than that. Um, I don't know. It doesn't say for how long. But it definitely lasts longer. So you can just... When it's off cooldown, just recast it on your mage and you're good. Everything else is just dealing more damage. More damage, more area. Really crazy. And all these get the 30% buff from your item. But if he does 60% more damage. And 30% of that. Just means he does what now? 67% more damage or something like that. It's, so it's not crazy, right? It's really not crazy, but it's a nice addition, I guess. Now for the, the interesting ones, the Chaos Bolts, of course. You absolutely need... You're first going to go down here. Actually, I would go with Damned. This direction, you give you Damned chance. And more damage over time. And then this thing. This is the key one. The Gate. Hitting your minions with Chaos Bolts grants them any damned, ignite, bleed, or frost by chance that Chaos Bolts grants from this tree, or gains from this tree. That's 10 seconds, does not stack. So basically, whenever I hit him with my Chaos Bolts, he gains 100% damned chance on all his attacks and 60% ignite chance on all his attacks. Right? Pretty simple. This is the first thing you want to do, then you go over here. You don't need any of these, you want to have this one. Chaos Bolt's projectiles have a chance to consume additional mana, causing it to deal more damage. Okay? The key thing is the next one. You need to max this, so it happens more often. Whenever mana is consumed by the Mana Anarchy node, which is this one. So whenever this happens, this is why you want to have three points in this, so it's maxed. Whenever this happens, your minions gain additional spell damage based on your maximum mana, and they also gain increased cast speed. So just even more cast speed, he shoots faster, and spell damage for 20 max mana. Was one, so he gets like what six extra spell damage or something like that. Now you can stack mana, but it doesn't really it doesn't really do much. Um, but that's just how the chaos bolts work. You need these two revolution and the gate to make him better when you shoot at him. 
And last one is Transplant, which is also always the same as always. You go up here for the Bone Armor. It's just all Bone Armor damage. And you go over here for the Kill Threshold, 15%. So whenever an enemy is under 15% health, you just Transplant on his face and he's dead. Really very simple. It's pretty much the same build as always for the Necromancer. Same with the passives. I went with Vault Retention here. You might not need that. But I wanted to have the Necrotic Resistance as well. Most people usually go for more minion health and vitality. I like this. Because it is my health and I need to survive. The minions not so much. So yeah. You definitely need for these five points in Warlock, by the way. Otherwise, you can't have your Chaos Bolts, right? They are unlocked by doing this. So you have to have these five points. And these are just nice because the extra int and mana region is pretty cool in the Lich. Everything else in the Necromancer, which is pretty much the same as always as well. Risen Army Classic. I put three into this for a little bit of health. You don't need it maxed. It's fine. Minion health, 150%. Ward retention. So you survive better. This one is just necrotic damage. Into armor shred. Cast speed, attack speed, classic. I mean, in health leech is also nice. It's not necessary, but I kind of like it. The crit chance is all relevant because he has 100% crit anyway, but it also has a freeze raid multi. So that's just nice. Um, and the tyrant gives us more health. Before, we didn't really need this that much because it takes minion health away, which is bad, obviously. But since ward has been nerfed, we need any health we can get for our character. This is why we go with the Tarrant. And then um, in here for minion or resistances. So they actually survive a little better. Especially for your tank. He, he really needs this because he does die. Especially in higher corruption. Minion necrotic damage. And then minion necrotic damage again. Getting both of these would be best. But we don't have so many points. And then up here. Um, minion crit multi. We don't care about the minion cold damage. But the crit multi. Now you can make this even stronger if you go with uh, there is the item if you don't run this one but a one-hander and the lich scorn it's a set item and offhand that turns dread shade into cold and then you also go with uh, cryomancers right but then you need two extra points so you would remove this one and put it all into cryomancers then he does cold damage i've done this before um, the, the, word, the reason I didn't do this with this one because this gives us Necrotic Penetration. So you lose that if you go for the cold one. But it's also a possibility if you want to go with that and you have to set that him lying around. And you don't have this one or you don't want to play the scales of Lemniscape. Then you can do that as well. That works just fine. So yeah, that's it for this build. The first build in Cycle 2. It's pretty much the same as the old and it's still kicking ass. So this didn't get nerfed too hard. I hope you enjoyed and have fun with it. And I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.